clinical trials and how to appraise clinical trials. First of all, we have to understand what clinical trials are. Clinical trials are the method for assessing the effectiveness of specific treatments. In essence, they involve comparing one treatment with another to determine which is better. The key requirement for clinical trials is that a fair comparison is made. So when we appraise a clinical trial, we have to ask essential questions. The essential appraisal questions are directed at the main reasons why the comparison might not be fair. Three, three important questions we need to ask. Were treatments randomly allocated? Were all the patients accounted for? Were outcomes assessed blind? So let's start answering the first question. Were treatments randomly allocated? For a fair comparison, the two treatments must be given to similar types of patients. This can be best achieved by randomly allocating patients to one of the two treatments. The process uses computer-generated random numbers to avoid any problems of human frailty. Now, if randomization has not been used, the patient receiving the two treatments are likely to be systematically different. The term quasi randomized is a warning signal. It usually means that patients have been allocated to treatments using a method which is convenient to the researchers, for example by day of the week. But this convenience itself may result in subtle differences between the two groups, which can really affect the accuracy of the results of the trial. Now the second essential question we need to ask when appraising a clinical trial is, were all the patients accounted for? Now, in clinical studies, contact with some patients may be lost. The concern in clinical trials is whether the patients who disappear are special in any way. For example, patients may fail to attend a scheduled appointment because they are so severely ill that they are unable to travel. Alternatively, they may be completely recovered and not see any need to attend. If one of the treatments being tested was truly effective, then patients who were being cured might not attend. If the other treatment was much less effective, it might well be the very sick who do not attend. It is not possible really to know why some patients disappear from follow-up. However, doubts about the fairness of the comparison emerge if a substantial number of those who were randomized have disappeared and concern is particularly heightened if more patients are lost from one treatment group than the other one. Now the third essential question we need to ask when appraising clinical trial is were outcomes assessed blind? When clinical judgment is needed to assess the outcome of treatment, there is the opportunity for personal views to intrude. One researcher may be an enthusiast for a new treatment and may subconsciously record a better outcome for the patients receiving it. Another researcher, aware of this possible bias, may overcompensate and give a better rating to the other treatment. The problem is prevented if those assessing treatment outcome are blind to the treatment each patient received.